Welcome to the Reformed Media Review. My name is Camden Busey. I'm in Grays Lake, Illinois, and I'm back with Jim Cassidy, who is the pastor of South Austin OPC in South Austin, Texas. Welcome back, Jim. It's good to see you. Yeehaw! Yeah, it's good to be back. (laughs) Well, very Texan of you. Yes. So today we're going to be speaking uh, about another book in Crossway's Short Studies in Systematic Theology, series. We uh, spoke last time about Gerald Bray's volume, The Attributes of God, and today we're going to be speaking about the Trinity, an introduction by none other than Scott Swain, who teaches theology down at uh, RTS Orlando. Tell us a bit about this book, Jim. Yeah, so hopefully everybody listened to the Bray review already, so I don't have to repeat everything, but this is part of a series that is very, very good. It is uh, geared towards a lay audience, and it's bringing systematic theology in a way that is pastoral, that is clear, and that is orthodox, as far as I could tell so far anyway. Um, So Swain's book is very good. It's introducing us to the doctrine of the Trinity. I love the way that he opens up chapter one. It's with the praise and the worship of the triune God. Uh, He rightly orients the reader towards doxology and and begins to unpack, uh, starting from the idea, the concept, the action of the believer in worship, and unpacks the doctrine of Trinity from there. So I I find it intriguing that he begins with worship rather than sort of abstract concepts. He he begins with the praise of God, the the chief end of man, which is to worship and commune with the one true and living God, and then begins to unpack there his doctrine of the Trinity. Yeah, I read this book. I read an electronic copy. I don't have one here in the studio, a hard copy in the studio to to hold up and, and show, you know, like on the Price is Right or, or something <laughs> like I like to do. Uh, but I read it. I read every every page of the book, and I, I greatly appreciated it as a helpful introduction. I thought it was quite sound. It was definitely within uh, the the orbit and uh, the long Catholic tradition that we have, a small c Catholic, of course, but uh, ex- exceedingly helpful and useful. You know, obviously, we have some particular concerns here at Reform Forum to promote a particular brand of uh, Trinitarian theology. We're very indebted to Cornelius Van Til on that front, but I found nothing ostensibly objectionable to this volume and f- found it quite useful. And I um, would be happy to to share this with others and especially, uh, you know, budding theology students who might want some clarity of thought on these matters and don't necessarily want to wade through all of, you know, uh, Bovink's dogmatics, for example. Um on this front, uh, certainly this isn't a reactionary volume. The series is very constructive and doing important work on its own. Nevertheless, the Trinity has been certainly under attack or at least under revision or reform, maybe would be the right words, uh, starting at least it came to a head, I believe, uh, in 2016, if I'm not mistaken, with all the discussion about the eternal subordination of the sun and uh, ERAS and other permutations of this thought that seeks to back complementarian and submission thought back up into the Trinity to find an ontological basis for the relation of man and woman in marriage and in church to, you know, the relation of father and son in, in the Trinity. Did you notice on this? No, certainly the, uh, the um, acknowledgments, <laughs> I think it's dedicated to Carl Truman, uh, Todd Pruitt, Amy Bird and Liam Gallagher, which uh, certainly were very vocal uh, opponents to this ESS uh, proposal back in 2016. Yeah, I mean, I get it, but I think it's so very unfortunate um, that we had to sort of tie up the complementarian um, uh, debate with debate now about the Trinity and the nature of God. I mean, um, I get it. I understand the connection and why those things were were being done, but um, it, it it is quite unfortunate. I don't. It was completely unnecessary, and in the process, the doctrine, the orthodox doctrine of the Trinity, it fell victim to yet once again evangelical debacle of theology. Right? I mean, this is uh, par for the course in this country. It's really sad to see, and I, I really appreciate Swain's book because while the book is not a polemic as such against eras or you know whatever um 
uh, you know, uh, Grudem and Ware and, and those folks and what they were doing with the doctrine of the Trinity. But he does address it. Um, and right. he addresses it, if I recall right. correctly, and I, I don't have my notes in front of me, but I believe it's in chapter five on God the Son. Um, and there he explains the relationship between the Father and the Son in the divine uh, being and addresses the issue um, that of, of that particular debate in a, in a way that I found to be very good and very helpful. Um, so, uh, you know, just to run through here uh, real quick, the you know, an overview of the book and some of the highlights that I thought was so helpful was uh, the first two chapters are about the Bible and the Trinity. So he enters into discussion about how the Bible is to be used and how it's not to be used with regard to developing our doctrine of the Trinity. And for our purposes here, Camden, because this has come to come up more than once on our programs, mm -hmm. is the issue of biblicism. And oh, I think yeah. that Swain rightly and healthfully uh, notes how biblicism has had a adverse effect on developing uh, and advancing really an orthodox Catholic understanding of, of the doctrine of the Trinity. Uh, so that was very helpful. Um, then he goes on and he talks about the doctrine of simplicity, and he 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 addresses the issue, sort of a naughty issue, of how can a God who is one in three also at the same time have a simple divine being or nature, right? Or essence. It's a difficult so question. He he addresses that I think in a way that is that is very good, very helpful, and and once it, Dr. Swain, this is this is um, I, I've read some small things by by Dr. Swain before. I've I've, I've seen just briefly some lectures he's given, uh, but this is the first book of his that I've read through, and I just was thoroughly impressed with, with how clear, um, articulate, um, and, and, and um, uh, pastoral his writing style is. Uh, it's, just, it, it's just, I can't commend the work enough. Now, all that being said, as you opened us up with, I do think that there are areas of of uh, where it could be improved by, as we were talking about with the Bray book, um, a uh, engagement, if you will, with Van Til's Trinitarian theology, uh, which of course we're, we feature here at Reform Forum, and particularly yeah. Lane's or Bovink's. We could even Van say Bovink because you know Van Til is borrowing immensely from Bovink on that front. So it's not just idiosyncratic, but there's a there's a tradition here that that's informing our thoughts here. And that also needs to be done obviously within the Catholic tradition. So I look, I we talk about this all the time and I don't want to apologize or, you know, say we're sorry for talking about it because this is in many reasons, you know, one of our reasons for existence. But we're not we're not idiots either. We re we realize we're rather niche and that the people, you know, this isn't some a subject of conversation, you know, in the broader in the broader scheme of things, but we think it should be. And that's why we keep talking about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's right. We we do keep talking about it um and and we will continue <laughs> to talk about it. Um uh, but all of that's I mean that's that is, you know, we don't expect, you know, when, when I approach a book like this, right? I I don't expect that the author is going to be articulating the doctrine of the Trinity the way in which I would or or we would at Reform Forum, although I would be pleasantly surprised if I found that right. Um, but all that being said, you know that is that is a a, a critique maybe or or maybe a, a, an area where where in my opinion the book would be strengthened, but it's not to take away one moment from the strengths of the book, right. uh, which are, in fact, quite yeah, prominent. They're numerous, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, particularly, I think, uh, you know, just to go through, uh, let me finish with the contents of the of the book, and then, um, and, and then I'll wrap it up with some thoughts as to how I think this book would be useful. Um, so anyway, so after the Doctrine of Simplicity, he's going to go and do three uh, fairly brief chapters where he's going to go through the teaching of Scripture on the persons of the Trinity, the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, respectively, in their own chapters. Uh, and then he's going to go on and talk about the work of God, of the Trinity. And, um, and he's going to break that into two short chapters, again, on the shape of the triune, uh, of the triune God's work, and then the end 
of the um, uh, triune gods, where so he's going to end sort of with eschatology and and the chief end of man, the orientation for which God created man, which was to be to the worship and praise of the triune God, which is where he began the book. Uh, so comes full circle. Uh, it's beautifully laid out and structured uh, pedagogically, et cetera. And so I'm going to say about this book, Camden, what I said about the Bray book before, which is that I think this is the kind of volume that would be so very helpful for a Sunday school teacher teaching maybe uh, an adult Sunday school class or maybe a men's discipleship group or or not necessarily men. That's probably old fashioned for me to say, but uh, right. certainly women a have a, Women class. have a different doctrine of the Trinity, so they need to be yeah. spoken with an instructed <laughs> Yeah, this right. is a personal gripe of of my wife's uh, that uh, you know only women can write theology books for women. <laughs> right, right, exactly. I mean, and, and this book would be helpful for any Christian uh, to to read through, but would would be a great sort of lead text to to orient your congregation to the doctrine of the Trinity. And look, I mean, let's be honest: in Reformed churches. The doctrine of God, most generally, but the doctrine of the Trinity, more particularly, is is underexplained and taught in our churches. And to take your congregation through a book like this will deeply rich in their faith. Um, so once again, I, I I just was so impressed with this book, and I'm so very thankful for Dr. Swain's work. Um, I've not, I've not met Dr. Swain. Uh, would love to someday, and and just thank him for the book. But anyway. Um, please, you know, pick it up, uh, read it, uh, but also bearing in mind that, you know, yeah. and maybe this is uh, fodder for future discussions, but um, ways in which our understanding of the doctrine of Trinity can be, you know, even more strengthened and, and made more robust. Right. Yeah. Love to speak with him about the book. Don't want to air any any laundry, but uh, reached out and contacted and would still love to uh, to have a conversation. We weren't able to make it work out. A couple months ago, but hopefully, uh, if people are listening, you can uh, hit him up on Twitter. You can find him on Twitter. He's pretty active there, and uh, maybe he'll come on Christ the Center. We could talk about this in greater detail. We'd be happy to do so. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we do certainly want to uh, encourage people to get a copy of the book. Uh, you can find it at crossway.org, and we'll have links to various places in the episode description. Scott Swain's The, Intro- or the Trinity, an Introduction published by Crossway in the Short Studies and Systematic Theology series, which is edited by Graham Cole and Oren Martin. I do want to thank everybody for listening to the Reformed Media Review, and until next time, tola lege, pick up and read.